So welcome back everybody to the Econclave 2020. Here we have with us a very robust panel which will share their thoughts on COVID-19, its impact on media and entertainment industry in India. And I take this pleasure to welcome our speakers on this live. Our session chair, Mr. Raman Kalra, partner CMO advisory leader, PwC India. Mr. Kalra is an entrepreneur at heart with 24 years of experience in industry and consulting with a strong track record in conceptualizing, growing and managing businesses. A very warm welcome to you, sir. In this panel, we have with us Mr. Krishna Rao S. Buddha, Senior Category Head Marketing, Parley Products. Sister Neeraj Vyas, Senior EVP and Business Head, Sony Pictures. Ms. Prashi Mohapatra, CMO, FBB, Future Group, India. Mr. Suresh Balakrishnan, Chief Revenue Officer, The Hindu Group. Ms. Uma Talreja, Chief Marketing and Chief Customer Officer, Shopper Stop. So I would like Mr. Kalra to take over this conversation. So till then, let me remind everybody that we are also live on Twitter. You can do live tweets right there. We're using our hashtag uh, E4M webinar. Our uh, tag is E4M tweets. All the speakers are here. If you have any questions, put it in your Q&A box if you're on Zoom or in the comments in, on Facebook Live. So we would be really uh, happy to take those questions on after the discussion is over. We're just sending a wait for Mr. Kalra to join in. And if I may take it on a lighter note with our speakers here, everybody who's here. Um, can Miss Uma tell me how has this quarantine been on a personal uh, note? Like I know the professional journey will happen through Mr. Kalra. <laughs> um, I think there have been a lot of uh, learnings in, in a manner of speaking. Yeah. Uh, firstly, of course, that work from home is not as difficult uh, in terms of coordination and managing things, though we don't have real work at present, but still. Yeah. Uh, it's much easier. But I think uh, definitely you start uh, missing small things and which are important for me. I think the most important thing is I can't go to the gym anymore. And I have to say before I thought of anything else, that was the first thought that uh, came to my mind saying that I can't go to the gym the next day. I tried every possible way to think of how the rule does not apply to that. But uh, of course, uh, that wasn't the case. And then trying to adjust, uh, you know, certain things that you really like and how will you evolve them whether it's catching up with friends. Luckily, I, my parents live with me, so that's a big comfort. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, being able to talk to my sister more regularly, uh, being able to really uh, talk to friends, colleagues are always in touch if, uh, with, of course. I think uh, it's been um, uh, you know, challenging, but it's been all right. It's yeah. Been all right. And um, in our building, uh, we do have a positive case. Uh, okay. A couple of days. And... Mm -hmm. uh, so certain areas of our building are under quarantine, not all because it's a pretty big complex. But right. it just makes you realize that uh, how important it is you know, to be there for each other without really being there, you know, right. physically that you cannot be there. For right. So I guess people will be happy to know what personally all of you are doing as well. So Mr. Krishnara, why don't you tell us how the quarantine been? How are you settling in? <laughs> so frankly speaking, uh, for us, um, on uh, so it's it's been actually... Um, significantly more than what uh, it it was pre covid 19 mm -hmm. so it's been it's been extremely hectic i would say actually in the last 15 days uh, i would say there has been a, a little bit of relaxation otherwise it's the going has been really crazy so so we we being a part of food uh, and food being an essential so we have yeah. been uh, we have been on actually uh, mm. right from the janta curfew day and right. multiple con calls, multiple uh, meeting sessions, in, in, uh, internal meetings. Right. So it's been crazy actually. So, so, so you must have been busier than ever during this time. Absolutely, absolutely. Frankly yeah. speaking. So we've had uh, several like you no know, internal discussions and continuously the work is on. Mm -hmm. And I, I uh, so some if someone would have asked me mm -hmm. uh, pre-COVID, so how about work from home? I would have said just not possible. So maybe it's it's all okay for IT guys, but right. for, just not possible. But I think there's a completely new perspective. I think uh, I think everything is possible. So we can Absolutely. remotely work uh, and 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 far more efficiently. I would say. Right, right. There is a great balance that people are creating between Absolutely. the home duties and the work duties right now from home. Absolutely. I would like to ask Mr. Vyas, uh, how are you doing in this quarantine? How are you handling personally? I personally completely 
hate working from home. Oh. <laughs> So I have a completely different perspective and you know it could be because of the line of uh, you know work that we do uh, uh, TV and live television is all about uh, you know uh, shoots and being there and uh, you know while we are doing our creative meetings and writing our episodes and we are doing our uh, you know so called casting and planning and everything for uh, the new shows and uh, all of that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I firmly believe that uh, the energy that uh, you physically bring into a creative meeting yeah. with, you know, writers or producers or, uh, you know, could be, in, uh, you know, visit the set, which I normally do once a week to all my shows and interacting with the actors and then, you know, reworking things and all of that, uh, I think uh, is, is a bit of a downer, you know, and work from home doesn't really let you do that. Uh, yeah. Personally, I'm a very hyper person. And, and, uh, so this is this downtime is not working very well. <laughs> yes. So so one tends to feel a little, uh, you know, handicapped. Uh, yeah. A little less in control, which is again something I don't like to be in. Yeah. Frankly, hating every moment of it beyond the point, doing everything that I have to, uh, but uh, not really liking this to be honest. Absolutely. I think most of us who are used to uh, being there physically to do what we do uh, are facing a lot of trouble. Like we all as artists are missing the stage so much. Like, you know, even if we can do this uh, online, but the whole energy and vibe of the stage. Oh, exactly how I feel. Yes, absolutely, sir. I do agree. <laughs> May I ask uh, Ms. Mahapatra, how are you dealing with this uh, quarantine? How is work for you from home? Well, uh, not uh, very different from what uh, Uma, Krishna and uh, Neeraj put in. Um, mm. I absolutely don't like staying away from people or in fact, uh, for that matter, staying out, not staying out in market is something that definitely makes me very scratchy. But um, on, the, on the other side, yes, I'm missing my dance classes. Yes, I'm missing my runs. Uh, that's something that most of us are here. Most of us, yeah, most of us are definitely feeling the need to be uh, there. Yeah. Um, on the on the other hand, uh, yes. Um, when I'm looking at the things, how it has been shaping up, I'm pleasantly surprised to find new things about myself. I'm pleasantly surprised to find that uh, things I never believed in, like getting uh, a, like a 15, 20 people to come together, create something, and put it out there and make it work. That's yeah. not something we had anticipated. In fact, uh, as Krishna was mentioning, Big Bazaar has been open and. Uh, all of us are uh, on our toes since yeah. the day lockdown has happened. We have not have uh, Sundays, Mondays. We just have days <laughs> now, as right. put in. So right. yes, um, things have been moving, uh, but uh, it's it's a surprising thing to see that how much plus plus we could bring on table despite such handicaps. Um, but right. uh, yes, most of us would like to go back to some part <laughs> of our old life. I don't know what normal is anymore, but some part of our old life. Yeah, I think there is going to be a pre-COVID and post-COVID world that we are going to oh, talk yeah. about after this. <laughs> so may I ask Mr. Suresh, how are you handling, sir, this quarantine time, this lockdown? Um, actually, um, for uh, our, our business, like Neeraj said, it's all about uh, going out there, meeting clients, meeting agencies, making business happen. So uh, to that extent, yes, missing that. But having said that, to agree with what Krishna and uh, Uma said, uh, one really didn't think that our kind of business could be conducted, you know, uh, of uh, sitting at home. And I think that's a real revelation. Yeah. Uh, as far as the energy goes, yes, missing my badminton, uh, which is something I, I miss desperately. But I'm putting all that energy into washing vessels, sweeping, <laughs> swabbing, uh, hanging out clothes. So I've become a fantastic case for Unilever. I can tell you the difference between Domex and Lysol. Wow. <laughs> liquid and Prill, between aerial front loading and surfmatic front loading. So, I've, really? apart from Cisco WebEx and Microsoft Teams and Zoom, <laughs> the other areas I, I also, you know, developed a lot of expertise in. So, you know. Wow. So, we can easily say that this lockdown and quarantine has all made all of us very domesticated as well, right? We are so good with uh, doing our domestic uh, duties at home now. But uh, because Mr. Kalra hasn't joined us yet, there's some technical difficulty still going on. So we're just trying to... I just joined. Oh, oh, brilliant. Uh. <laughs> brilliant. So Mr. Kalra is here. So I'm going to take your uh -huh. ring. Thank you, everybody. Mr. Kalra, I'd like you to take the lead now. 
Thanks, thanks for holding. Thanks, Shadi, for holding the fort for that. <laughs> no problem. It's no so problem. funny, uh, uh, Krishna. I see you on the screen. So uh, I'll, 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 you know, uh, tell you first. I've been like all of us have been on video calls all day long, and it gets struck right on this one. Am I audible now? By the way. Yeah, absolutely yes, perfect. 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 Super, perfect. super. I'm glad. I don't know. I just changed my laptop, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Uh, after Absolutely uh, great, uh, you know, to be here with you guys, Suresh. Uh, good to see you. I see a lot of pictures, you know, uh, on the wall behind you. A lot of <laughs> memories, I'm sure. Yes. You know, I, yes. I, I, hi Prachi, hi Uma, hi. and uh, hi. Uh, hi Krishna. Uh, hi. I think in the interest of time, maybe uh, I assume Kathy did all the introductions already. So everybody, uh, you know, in the group, uh, all the people who are watching us live over here, thank you so much for taking your time to come to this conversation. We will straight away jump into it in the interest of time, you know. As we all know, the one word I heard uh, some people start saying now: please avoid unprecedented word totally and completely. Even <laughs> I heard, I think uh, someone was saying even yesterday also uh, on one of these uh, webinars only. So uh, we all know the impact that has happened. So I won't touch upon there at all. You know, I think uh, let's ra rather jump down to you know what matters uh, for the audiences to come to listen to us. You know, a health crisis, which which uh, became an economic crisis. You know, uh, that we know about now uh, from a media industry perspective. I, I always say, you know, like media industry is is it's not just about uh, the the vertical, there's the vertical side of it, which is the publishers and everybody around there, and then there's the horizontal side of it, which is all the brands, people who spend money, and and the industry gets defined by two people, by and large, simplistically putting putting in you know, the the one who chuck who cuts the check. So we have people, you know, on the discussion today who cuts the checks, and we have uh, we have uh, Uma, we have uh, we have Prachi, you know, uh, from that perspective, uh, we have Krishna from Parley. Uh, and then people, you know, who watch the the advertisements at the end of it, like like, like a wearing a consumer hat. And everybody in the middle, you know, everybody in the in between the consumer and the one who is cutting the check, you know, is a value chain which keeps shifting, you know, uh, every every few years. Sometimes there is a tectonic shift that happens, and what I feel will happen because of COVID-19 will be no less than a tectonic shift on the value chain, you know, on the media and the impact on media industry. So, so yeah, so there will be a few gainers, there will be a few losers, but before we jump to that, you know, uh, before there is a, uh, there is a huge demand contraction that has happened because of COVID-19 and the demand contraction has led to a severity of, uh, you know, of uh, funds coming to the marketing. The first budget, you go to any company and say that the first budget that takes a hit when things go down, is a marketing budget, but but does it mean that you stop marketing? Of course not. You know, you you got to still continue. You know, uh, keep the steam alive. And uh, who knows it better than people? You know, on the on the panel here. And uh, I think it was very heartwarming to see the all the brands adopting the core theme of you know care, uh, trust, empathy as a primary communication force, you know, keeping the, keeping the larger purpose of the brand alive, you know, in these times, that was very heartwarming. And, and of course it was the need of the art and the only uh, sensible thing to do. Uh, now, now moving forward, you know, you can do that only up to a point. You can, you know, like, like, like a, ask a CMO, ask a marketer or ask a brand, you know, you can keep on talking about, you know, we care, uh, while you will always keep talking about that, right? but somewhere you have to strike a balance and uh, have the other messages also go to the consumers that buy my product, I'm giving you a 30% discount, you need it, you know, <laughs> so, so, so that way. Uh, what we would want to do in the next 45 minutes as a free going, you know, our discussion is, uh, is understand the impact. Before we uh, go there, I would request uh, maybe, you know, uh, maybe we can start uh, from... Uh, Let's say Prachi, you know, uh, passion, and you know, let let's pick uh, FPB as a brand, uh, as a brand. So, so Prachi, if, uh, if you know, and we'll do a very quick round, and we'll talk about it. What has been the the really the immediate short term impact that you have seen? And I will I'll categorize that as a survival strategy. You know, so what had been the the short term uh, survival strategy and the you know, uh, and how you you guys have uh, really experienced that as a business that you run. You want would, would you like to share that quickly before we move on to the other things? Yeah. yeah. 
So, um, I mean, there are two ways to look about it, and I'm going to talk about the fashion side of our uh, business as well as the essential side of our business as well, uh, mm. which I look into actively. Um, so, when I talk about the fashion side of the business, I'm sure Uma would also have her point of view on this from a shopster perspective. Uh, we definitely uh, have been locked down. Since the day uh, we have uh, been into a lockdown, uh, the fashion side of the business has definitely taken a hit and rightfully so. As I keep on saying before, marketers, all of us are consu uh, consumers and uh, this is not going to be any different from people who consume our product. Um, they're not going to make any purchase at this point of time, which is not an essential for them as it has rightly been for us. All of us have been from the day, from the word uh, go, have been hoarding up on essentials and that's all everybody is doing. Um, so definitely the fashion side of the business has uh, seen a lockdown, complete lockdown. Um, the the short term strategy, as I would put it, um, is as a value brand, yes. we are seeing we're going to see a lot of uplift. We are going to, we're anticipating an upswing primarily because of a lot of pent up demand, which is, which is there. Yes. To give you an example, uh, if I look for a kid's category, uh, a kid or an infant born, think about an infant born during a lockdown. I'm sure there would have been a prep for him to be received uh, or her to be received. But at the, at, by the end of two months, three months, they have new requirement. They have new motor skills. The requirement for a new toy, the requirement for a new uh, apparel, the requirement from a perspective of a child growing out of its or her sizes is manifold. And that's not the only area we're talking about. We're talking about now if, if I don't touch the food part of it. I'm going to talk about um, something like I was reading today and we are experiencing from our own experience. There's a huge pent up requirement for epilators, depilators. That's something that we can't avoid. All of us have been without a haircut, without a normal salon services for quite a long, long time. And that's going to be true for got, any one of us. I got us. mine done. For any one of us. I, I got mine done from my daughter. <laughs> See? See? Now we have new talent. Now we have new talent. So yeah. that's something that we are noticing. So I think that's something yeah. that's going to be prepped about. Very, very exciting to, uh, interesting to hear, you know, uh, specifically on your views on the pent up demand, you know, and so you, you see a silver lining, you see a, you know, upsurge uh, happening as we move forward. Linking this thread, you know, and, and going to Uma, uh, Uma since, you know, uh, pretty much, you know, in the similar category, uh, at least from fashion perspective, how would, how would you see uh, this whole thing shaping up and the, and the journey so far? Uh, for shopper stop, you know, uh, both from a physical retail point of view and how you guys have really moved, you know, or, or you know, seen the shift from uh, physical retail to online so far. Yeah. I would, uh, taking a leaf from what Prachi said, I think that the response from consumers might firstly vary by category, right? And uh, I think there will be a redefinition of what is essential. Right, so everybody is going to look at their own need state and their own situation, their own economic condition. And I think that essentials as a definition will change, right? So what is essential for me going forward might be very different for let's say somebody else, you know, like you going forward and it might completely be different. And I think that will influence a lot of category demand and whether it's pent up or not, I think that's still not really uh, as big as we expect it to be is what I think. So some of the data that I've seen, which is coming from across the world, I don't think any of the countries which have opened up have seen a major bounce back. So for a year, I think we'll have to really go after these very niche need states and be able to segment our customers around, you know, whether it's geographies, whether it's demographics, life stages, and what is it that they're going to really need. Really. In this, I think comfort, safety, security, of course, we all know is going to prevail and that's going to be very, very key. And it'll change, I think, the way people are living. And what will it unlock in terms of innovation? I think that is one of the things that is very, very critical. The number of brands that have launched mass in this point in time, right? Of all kinds of brands, we've launched uh, Vinvin's mass a few days back, which have like Jaipuri ethnic prints. Goes get sold yes. off our website. So yesterday launched uh, kids masks with Marvel characters, for example, right? Which we never thought we would be doing, you know, in the past. We, as a department store, would have never really thought of selling like a FMCG hand sanitizer. But today we are actually selling hand sanitizer as well. So I think this is just the you know the beginning of that innovation. But really, how we use uh, the next year where social distancing, safety 
will be a will be a way of life for us what can we do to actually innovate around product i think is going to be very very important for us to be not only serve the pent up demand which is what you could not have but what are you going to need in the future i think that is going to be very very important and how do we as a retailer cater to that i think the second piece where you said which is you know online and all of us you know who have been in brick and mortar or even in primary online channels nobody really made a profit if this becomes a critical channel to so uh, customers in the future customers will require some amount of uh, uh, digging into you know what is the model going to be where are we going to optimize yeah. our costs how are we going to get better roi and efficiencies i think that's the second piece which is going to be important a lot of us also had stores let's say in tier 2 tier 3 maybe they're not as uh, severely affected in sentiment by covid or the penetration of covid how i think we might just end up running parallel streams right what do we do online what do we for stores which are badly what affected what do we for stores which are not as badly affected so i think one has to really think this through in terms of how we can create multiple strategies keeping the consumer context in mind as to what's really happening with them at that so what's really happening with them and the uh, different strategies of innovation i think that's very really important i think that's so yeah so i i i would uh, completely agree with you you know for every every business and you know, as you as you rightly said uma for every business i think uh, wherever you might stand in terms of digital maturity curve you know there are a lot of enterprises and i'm right now i'm talking about you know brands cutting across industries so uh, you know if somebody says that you know i have been really high on digital maturity they also need to sit down and think of new innovative ways of connecting with the consumers and you know being relevant in the market space a lot of industries a lot of companies have been caught off guard being having not transformed digitally as much you know in the past and suddenly they are like you know kind of grappling that we got to transform you know sooner otherwise you know you really lose out on market brand i think that's a very valid point on digging into the new model as we go forward and and building up some innovation uh i'll move on to krishna krishna you know uh, a very very relevant you know fmcg brand let's say a parle uh you know you deal into confectionery uh, bakery uh, you know and snacks business of uh, of parle now one can really you know uh, there is very thin line between essential and non essential but that will of course you know uh, go out as we go forward you know a few weeks on the line how has you how have you seen the journey over last you know two months on uh, on your business and 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 how has the organization really responded uh, you know uh, to the supply chain and the sales side of uh, of parley products would you, would you want to quickly share on that uh, two three minutes yeah sure so yeah, sure. so quickly like um, so i remember uh, somewhere around the 15th of march is when we our office sort of asked you know to operate with 50% of our uh, workforce and somewhere around the 17th or so so we uh, the directors uh, called us for a quick 5 minute uh, at a short notice of 5 minutes and asked us to form a team act just to form a team act and thereafter there has been thing that 22nd of uh, march uh, janta curfew and followed by the lockdown on the uh, declared on the 25th uh, we have been on actually so so we being uh, considered as food uh, uh, which is an essential Uh, so besides uh, fresh fruits vegetables etc so initially we struggled a lot uh, right from uh, convincing our own uh, field force uh, our own uh, depots our own units we operate with about 130 contract manufacturers we have about 10 of our own mother mother units which are owned by parley so to 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 actually uh, motivate them to open and start their business most importantly the, the final leg the distributors so the leg the is the like, uh, is the company lost the company it lost it why are they asking us to work in the scenario but then i can tell you that um, that over a period of time like 25 26 Seven twenty six is when we sort of announced uh, that we are going to give about uh, 3 crore uh, parleji packet uh, free to the to the government and to the health workers so but actually this has been a regular ritual at parle so be it satara floods kerala floods bihar wherever uh, any earthquake and also we keep sending truckloads of biscuits and rusk but then here we sort of mm-hmm. when we 
when it when we saw when it when it was when it was declared in public it became much easier for us to say to easier for us to say to the entire uh, channel uh, for say so we we sort of struggled to get manpower at our at our uh, units uh, and which we sort of managed we got a permission to operate with about 50% man man manpower and we struggled to get uh, 20 25% manpower and uh, with that we managed we started with 12 hour shifts tried to up it to 16 hours and now as we speak we are in the process of just going to almost about 24 hour shifts at most of our locations almost about 100 plus locations are active up and running uh, there are a lot of red zones where we are not getting we are finding it difficult but uh, we were finding it extremely difficult like you mentioned about supply chain so our vendors our vendors were not really geared up we to make biscuits you need the wheat flour you need the vanaspati and many other things uh, sugar etc so we had to ensure that even wrapper for example so so how is a police wala a constable going to know the, the ink that is going to print a wrapper is actually a part of an essential so so those were the kind of challenges that we sort of faced and um, we managed to get our our, our 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 laminates we managed to get our products out and we started churning out so initially for the first few days it was easier uh, wherein we had a lot of inventory but then as we progressed into the mid of april and uh, is when we sort sort of started feeling the heat because our dip depots are actually gone empty one can play cricket there now so we don't really have stock so uh, and and uh, chains like yeah big bazaar uh, and all all of them actually uh, uh, all all leading chains have been actually asking us they have been sending they, they, they in, in the initial uh, 10 days or so they were actually willing to send their own trucks to get stocks directly delivered to the store dsd so direct to store deliveries and we've done that uh, but having said that so we have a range of about 60 brands so so we had to sort of uh, focus and we we said okay we'll focus only on 12 brands and within those say parleji has got 10 skus we said we only focus only on about five of those critical ones so that actually gave us a leeway in terms of uh, jacking up our production capacity so, so there was less change over as a result of which we our yields our outputs were much superior much better uh to say that uh, to sum it up actually so we've had a frankly speaking a very different unique experience but at the same time a terrific experience uh, the the demand is just going crazy so it's 300% the demand in the market for all our brands is is more than 300% we are struggling to cope up and uh, in april the whole of 1920 we struggled to get a 5% value growth Only in April we we managed to clog a thirty seven percent growth, and we we are like. I'll I'll hold you. I'll, I'll just uh, uh, intervene there. I I you know I think it's, it's a, a interesting uh, comment that you made on on the thin line between you know proving being essential and non essential, the supply side of it, and how you know uh, how the whole lockdown and the physical movement has been impacting the business. I'll come back to you, uh, uh, Prachi and Uma. Uh, and specifically on the marketing you know on the marketing strategies you know how do you really plan to connect the consumers uh, the shift from you know the way you had been marketing earlier your whole media mix modeling on traditional channels channel channels to uh, you know the digital and how the kind of shift you see because consumer behavior has shifted so i'll come back to you know uh, three of you from a brand point of view before that you know uh, i would want to quickly move on to neeraj and uh, and suresh you know uh, and and you know so there are there are segments of industries which have gone down dramatically you know whether it is uh, an out of home cinema even theme park exhibition uh, you know a lot of these businesses are are seeing you know and print you know so they have uh, they have seen a big big you know dramatic fall in their business models while there are of course certain businesses like you know ott e sports or a news broadcast you know as a as a as a boon you know for from a pay tv news news industry perspective education online you know e commerce they have seen a, a, a huge you know uh, upsurge you know as as a part of this this shift i i would come to uh, suresh to you uh, as a chief revenue officer for hindu group you know you look into the print circulation side of business also the online side of business hindu did their journey on digital uh, pretty well ahead of time as compared to a lot of other bigger players you know uh, regional bigger players in the country how has how have you seen you know the impact on revenues because of uh, the health and hygiene and the lockdown taking away the print circulation and and the and the, and the movement on digital side of it uh, 
uh, how has been the experience on that? Very quickly, if you can, uh, Suresh, talk about it. Suresh? Yeah, it's been uh, dramatic, uh, to say the least, uh, the experience yeah. over the last uh, few weeks. Uh, you're right, circulation has, um, has been hit. Uh, because in a lot of places, they felt that uh, allowing newspapers into complexes or into uh, houses might actually be um, uh, counterproductive. Uh, although there is nothing to prove that uh, uh, newspapers actually are COVID carriers, but that's, that's for another time, the argument is for another time. Uh, uh, circulation was hit. Uh, less so, I think, in the south where we circulate. I think it was severely hit in Bombay because including the, including the government took a stance that you know, it shouldn't be delivered in Bombay. And Bombay and Delhi were badly hit in terms of circulation. South, less so, but yes, it was hit. Advertising revenues dried up completely almost. April and May, obviously, you know, advertiser is, there's, the consumer can't go out, the advertiser is not advertising. So those were the uh, downsides. So revenues were really uh, badly hit in these, uh, in these few, uh, eight weeks that we have been locked down now. The positive side, of course, has been that our uh, digital acceleration. Like you rightly said, uh, you know, we uh, we went, uh, Hindu group went on everything, on e-paper, on digital, everything is paid, business line, Hindu, front line, everything is paid and we went pay more than eight, nine months ago. So, uh, don't, don't ask me why eight, nine months ago, but uh, probably, you know, good that we did when we did. So, um, and as a result, even, uh, even though we went paid, our digital uh, unique users has gone up by 81%. Or post lockdown, past lockdown. Uh, E-paper has gone up by 141 uh, percent. Subscription has gone up by 91 percent on E-paper, and subscription on digital has gone up by 110 percent over. Uh, I'm talking about pre and post lockdown. So yes, uh, there has been a downside in the circulation and the advertising revenue, significant downside. And but there has been a huge upside in uh, digital. And I'd also like to mention, like uh, Krishna said. We are also a product that has to come out every day. So hats off to my editorial colleagues and my production colleagues for in these trying times, day in and day out, there's not been one day when we have not produced the paper. Not one day. Across 19 editions of the Hindu across the South, editors have been coming to work, editorial staff has been out on the field, uh, production guys have been coming to the factory, producing <laughs> the paper, distributing it. So I think, um, and we have learned new ways of doing it by taking all necessary precautions. Obviously, Safety of employees and security of employees was number one for us too. And even in those conditions, we have learned how to um, maneuver ourselves around those conditions and still produce the paper every day. So while on one hand, there has been a hit, financial hit, um, our future, which is the digital has really ramped up for us. And uh, also how to bring the paper to the consumer in trying times has been a great lesson for us. And both, like I said, editorial and production has done a fabulous job and circulation. I mean, the circulation boys every morning at 4.30, making sure papers are distributed. I think it's been a great learning experience for us also. And uh, essential, I mean, we also uh, uh, fell under the essential, uh, under the essential tag, uh, so we didn't have anybody stopping, tag, so we didn't have anybody stopping. Uh, except the consumer himself sometimes from entering his house. Otherwise, uh, everywhere it was um, a, a very good learning experience for us. Having said that, uh, is, this, is this digital acceleration here yeah, to stay? Great. Uh, will it be at the cost of the newspaper, which will be the classical uh, rejoinder to something like this? Well, Raman, your guess is as good as mine uh, on this one. Because uh, uh, yes, some amount of this digital acceleration, uh, I think, will help us hugely. Some of them will convert. But people who have been used to reading a physical newspaper for 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, when the lockdown comes, will they suddenly say, no, I no longer need a newspaper. I'll make do with my e-paper. Well, we will have to wait and watch. Our own research shows us and this is a research, obviously we've, we've, we have access to our databases. Our own research shows us that more than 70% of the people said that when the newspaper comes back, they would like to subscribe to it. So that's what our research tells us that the, out of the people who are now not getting the paper, so the people who are now not getting the paper, they would like to go back. Well, to, they would like to go back to. Yeah, so I hear you out, Suresh. I think uh, uh, very, very exciting to hear from you that that upsurge in uh, digital has happened for you guys and likewise for other guys. And I think. Uh, I would agree with you. Uh, I have been into panels for the last about seven, eight years talking about paywalls and uh, news, you know, going on a paid on digital platforms. People are willing to pay. The whole debate between free news versus paid news. But I think people have started to realize the value of good editorial content. 
they will therefore subscribe they will pay for it you know and and that is on the rise more and more i'll park a very very pertinent question for you and i link it with uh, you know before that i want to move on to neeraj but i'll come back to you you know whether you know you have uh, you know you have uh, prachi uma and krishna you know over there i would want to ask them that are you trying going to spend money on uh, on the digital platform for hindu you know and will that be good enough for you to offset the revenue that you lose out on the print side of advertising advertising i'll come back to that i'll, I'll give them my i'll give them my i'll give them my they have my contacts already so <laughs> my phone number and my email id you know <laughs> so i'll come to that so before that neeraj neeraj you are into very exciting side of business you know film film entertainment you know and uh, okay. and yeah. of course you know You know, there are uh, there are different kind of impacts that has happened on the film business. You know that the shooting, you know, on the shop floor has got halted. There's so many hygiene and health issues which is going to impact not only in the short term but also into the pretty much in the mid to long term. So so ways and means of of production would need to be relooked at. And likewise, you know, uh, the theatrical release and the exhibition business, like for the PVRs and You know, uh, you know, Cinepolis of the world. You know, uh, that's a different business model, but that would impact severely uh, the one key monetization of film revenue for you people. So how 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 do you see, uh, you know, the impact hitting you know uh, you in this space and and a, and a few uh, quick thoughts around it? Okay, so you know, I'll break this up into two things. Uh, since I handle a large portfolio of of uh, you know channels which make original content and also the The, the new movie channels, which essentially are library channels, which is the max uh, channels, all of them. Uh, the good news for us is that consumption is not a problem. Yeah. Like so many other categories, uh, we in the last, uh, I think, uh, eight weeks of of the lockdown uh, have grown by around forty percent. Now this is, uh, you know, and even now, after uh, almost eight weeks, uh, we are getting thirty percent growth as of yesterday, uh, as uh, for whatever Mark tells us. Uh, so consumption is not a problem, and this is far higher than uh, you know countries like the US or UK or France, which are growing. Uh, there's, 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 there's lots of disturbance uh, oh, in your audio. There's lots of really? disturbance in your audio. Here, are you there? I'm there, but uh, am I audible now? Yeah, it's better. It's better. It's definitely better. Better, definitely. Okay. I I seem to have lost on screen, but that's fine. Uh, is it okay now? No, there is a disturbance actually. As you come closer, maybe there is a disturbance. Okay, is it okay now? Yeah, I think that's yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Okay, so what I'm saying is that uh, you know, from a consumption point of view, uh, we don't seem to be having any problem. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, people under lockdown are, are definitely watching TV, and uh, so so that that is essentially is all the problem. I think the larger issue for us is that uh, we are not being able to generate uh, original content, and that at some point of time, I think, is going to catch up with us. Uh, it's it's it's. Uh, Repeat content essentially on the GCs, which which is playing out right now, and uh, you know that means everybody is run out of uh, a lot of the repeats as well. So a lot of uh, you know old content got played out, be it uh, Mahabharat or Ramayana on TV, and now it's getting played out again on on Star and others. Uh, so a lot of religious devotional uh, kind of content is playing out, snacky, fun content, light-hearted, Tarak uh, Mehta or Tajeshma kind of content. Uh, news, movies. Uh, so these are the genres that that are being viewed right now, and uh, so I, I believe that a base viewership will will definitely uh, you know be a reality because uh, you know whether it's uh, it's uh, any kind of uh, you know recession or depression or inflation or COVID or whatever, uh, consumers will need content, uh, and and uh, content will be consumed. Uh, I think the larger challenge for us is going to be the resumption, and uh, as and when resumption happens, uh, I think uh, you know uh, our issues of production uh, are going to be fairly complicated because a lot of hard work, uh, you know, was was and is is a, a last minute. Neither, neither, not audible. Still bad. Yeah, yeah, very bad actually. You 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 do you want to have a quick relook at the audio at your end? In the meantime, I move the discussion to uh, other. Let me try and reconnect. Let me try and reconnect. 
I'll move the discussion to uh, you know quickly to uh, now back to uh, Uma, Uma and Prachi. Uh, so you know as we as you go forward now, now consumer habits have really changed dramatically. You know nobody knows that uh, uh, what would be the shopping behavior uh, between you know going forward from a consumer standpoint. Uh, how much of uh, physical retail shopping will come back in what form and shape? How do you see uh, your strategies changing now uh, when you connect with the consumers? Do you do you know you guys advertise a lot, a lot, and you are big spenders? So do you see a, a big shift happening to digital uh, uh, marketing to internet advertising? And uh, and any challenges do you see over there on uh, engaging with the consumers? Why would like you to go ahead? First? Uh, Prachi, you want to give it a shot? Uh, so, uh, yes, of course, uh, there is, we have been big spenders. It's not, we're not shying away from that, uh, the fact that we have been big spenders on all the medium, uh, all the media, in fact. And, um, uh, of course, there is a change in behavior of consumer. Uh, of course, we have changed. Um, what we are uh, focusing on, and in fact, as, as, an, as a group also, we, we don't want customer uh, running to our shops immediately. Um, as Uma earlier mentioned, the, the, the fact that social distancing, the fact that safety is going to be a prime concern, concern for all of us, we definitely are going to uh, adhere to uh, what uh, the new customer behavioral changes are there. Uh, of course, uh, there is a lot of focus on how safe your uh, retail space is going to be. Uh, but fear and greed is not something we are going to play front foot on. That's something that as a mass brand that and, and in retail we have done very effectively. In the past 20 years, I think we have been forefront runners in the retail space in, in managing fear and greed. But that's not something that we are going to do at this point in time. And it's rightfully so. The behavior of customer has changed. How people are consuming product has completely changed. So our focus is definitely going to shift from uh, retail or brick to click. Um, how effective it is going to be? Uh, have we changed? As you rightly mentioned, at any company at any stage of digital maturity is going to move to digital space ahead from what it was uh, already. For us, it is no different. Uh, we have been able to uh, create uh, our online uh, portal for ordering within, within a record 10 days for people to come back on to us and order online and get their essentials. And that's something that we are going to gear up and stabilize from here on. Uh, we definitely want the traffic to move there. We do not want people rushing back to our stores in a hurry. Um, and uh, I don't know if there is any other uh, way of addressing this um, at this point of time. We don't want uh, to open another channel of, uh, of the, 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 the pandemic spreading out anymore. From then on. Do, you, do, you, do you see your, your uh, with this shift in consumer behavior that happened, and and the same question would you know go to Uma also? You know, so Uma, please feel free to pitch in on this one, uh, and also to Krishna in fact. So all three of you, you know, uh, in, in your in your quest to stay connected with the consumers, in a, in a very very fast moving uh, behavior which is happening, all the brands are really uh, you know uh, figuring it out that do we really know how fast the shift has happened. And are we connected the right uh, medium or not? So, so your marketing, you know, as the marketeers, uh, you know, you actually are at the forefront of it. You know, that the role of marketeers has was always so important, so critical, and it is going to be even more critical as we go forward because you know, engaging the consumers in the digital world is where the marketing excellence and marketing effectiveness will come into play. So, uh, you know, do, do you feel that this shift? As you, you know, Prachi, you were talking about mediums and trying out a new business model, etc. How effective your digital marketing strategies are, and and do you see any challenges over there from a you know from a whole uh, uh, engagement point of view, uh, you know, from uh, effectiveness of previous medium that you had, or if I ask a very pointed question, you know, I don't know what is your spend on digital right now. Uh, how do you see that moving? How fast the needle will move for you guys, let's say from uh, uh, non-digital to di digital mediums of advertising? So Raman, um, for us, it's learning by the R, not even by days anymore. Um, so the ecosystem is still not stabilized. Uh, so for example, uh, day for yesterday, we opened a store in Panal. Yesterday, it was closed. 
so uh, these are things we are taking as it comes before we start optimizing a campaign the campaign seems futile or the campaign just takes off so there is there will be definitely uh, changes and we are moving as as we are seeing the ecosystem change and that's for everybody to know that the ecosystem is not stabilized at any point of time and it's going to take some time to stabilize also so for us uh, yes we are definitely increasing our digital footprint no doubt about it how far we have been successful a part of it definitely looks into uh, comes into sale um but at this point of time judging anything by the revenues that we are generating is is a, it's it's not the right space to judge because i'm sure uh, words like revenge shopping words like pent up demands will flow, uh, flow out and this is not a space that we can know that is a sustainable way of looking at a business so at this point of time we are meeting requirements we are meeting requirements from whatever is on our table and we are meeting out it from all the medium possible um how far it is effective it's uh, as anybody's guess it's it's something that i don't know i want would agree like like i think I, i love it when you say that you know uh, your strategy by r you know which is uh, you know that that's as agile as as a, as an organization can you know uh, get into uma uh, yeah. uh, quick views from you on this and also yeah. if you might want to add uma when you can speak uh, uh, how do you see the organizational readiness to tackle this shift you know uh, sure. for example shopper shop as an organization you do you see yourself being ready to address this shift or you see you yourself going through a major transformation to you know meet the consumers over there yeah. i think uh, firstly i think as an organization we feel a lot of responsibility towards the brand right because it's a brand which has created a new category so i think that is definitely top of our mind in terms of what is the brand going to mean to consumers in this point in time and as it as the situation evolves and uh, i think it's a brand that has been built through customer relationships and we run a very uh, strong loyalty program called cross citizen which gives us of course which gives us of course a smooth relationship is the relationship is at the heart of our strategy of our strategy what we really we do really we do so that's the first thing so that's the first thing the second thing is i think when we have to look at where will that effectiveness really play out and in the last uh, 40 days really we have actually started looking at our online channel of course much more carefully because it might really serve the customers differently and we were one of the first few retailers to invest in technology and strategy for being omni channel and uh, we have shipped from store click and collect and many such services which we had integrated into our business model and what are we doing therefore to you know really make sure that that is able to serve at this time probably in a different manner than it was earlier so from being maybe a convenient channel maybe it progresses into being a relationship channel for a large base of customers we have almost 7 million first citizens how do we actually make sure we get a bridge for them in terms of giving them that comfort and uh, assurance from a brand which is high trusted i think that's very critical uh, for us at this point in time as well i think the third piece is as stores open you know like i mentioned you know, and like prachi mentioned something open something closes i think keeping your eye on that a uh, you know uh, event in terms of what's going on on the ground and what are customers saying and i think that is really important to us we even did a survey with all our customers so uh, a large base so like about 10000 people that we survey during lockdown as to what they will expect in terms of both safety measures in terms of service as well as what they would be wanting to buy and what we will need and we have connected that back now through prepaid orders so we have been running prepaid orders for a bit we are allowed to deliver essentials if you have to then get essentials of course uh, populated in our case we don't serve essentials as much but even our prepaid orders in the last 10 days actually we have started getting orders for delivery later which we just mind certain insights in terms of going back and talking to consumers itself and then putting that back into our promotions marketing home page what is it that we really want to uh, serve the customer what do they need i think that goes to the heart of you know really saying that this is what the customers told us how do we really act on that uh that's important going straight forward to a media uh, dis, uh selection i think roi is going to be more important than ever because the first things will be tight and uh, i think that will determine you know what really will actually make those choices as we go along you know how how our media uh, players going to rise to that challenge what kind of support are we going to get both from creativity point of view as well as measurement point of view because that's something that will be uh, paramount and has to be justified in this uh, 
uh, you know, process along with the partners. And I think partners will have to rise to that. And I think the stronger partnerships that we create between, uh, you know, media as well as uh, CMOs and brands, I think that is really what is going to actually shape how we sh- shape marketing, right? Because we know the challenges as consumers will face, but really the media partners as well as us have to really design the solutions to go back and address the market need at that point in time. That will require both creativity and agility, I think, right? In terms of what we are able to do and it will have to be like Prachi says, whether we learn and we are, but how fast we execute, I think both will be very, very critical at this point in time. So I, I, I agree. I think the speed and scale both would be important. You touched upon a very relevant point which I was coming to uh, next year. You know, the analytics would you know, analytics and, and technologies around artificial intelligence will become more and more important. And, and AI plays a significant role in fashion, for example. You know, it can really, you can do so much on an on a AI-powered uh, uh, technology platform. It is which gives you a complete look and feel of, you know, what you are wearing as a fashion and then you can buy it you know, easily. Uh, and I'll come to MarTech, which you briefly touched upon, you know, the technology play in readiness. Before that, you know, I'll, 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 uh, there is a quick question uh, from Sri Nivasan AB and he asked that out of 10 shoppers who used to come to physical stores, post-COVID, what will be the number, let's say, one year on the line? Just give a number, no statement, one number, let's say. Uh, I, think, uh, <laughs> I hope they all come back. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Prachi? I don't think I don't I don't hope they come back so fast. I think about about five of them. I would be happy with them. Right. Okay. So Srinivasan, you got your answer. Say if out of ten, you will get five. You know, in, in near mid near to midterm timelines. Uh, I'll move on to uh, Neeraj. Are you back with a good sound? Neeraj, you are on mute. Neeraj. You are on mute. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, Neeraj, go ahead. You got, uh, uh, you know, quick two, three minutes because we, we ran, we're running out of time. But, yeah. But yeah. I do want to finish what you were talking, you know. Yeah. No, so the point I was quickly trying to make is that, uh, you know, we don't have a consumption problem as of now. Consumption has gone up by 30, 40%. And uh, so that's, that's the good part. And, uh, you know, be it inflation, be it COVID, be it depression, be it anything. Uh, content is is a reality and and consumers will always need content. I think the tricky part for us is to figure out how soon uh, do we get back to our uh, shoots and and we have this this routine of putting up uh, new content every day, uh, which I think is going to be the biggest challenge today for us, Uh, which means uh, following a completely new uh, set of uh, rules and discipline. Uh, Most of our studios are outside of Bombay and and, uh, really in, in far off suburbs of Bombay, like uh, Mira Road and Naiga and Rainsar and all of that. Uh, the studios are not in the best of conditions from a hygiene standpoint. Uh, we have very large crews of, of more than 100 and 150 people across all shoots. Uh, most of those people uh, who are, are migrant workers and most of them have obviously gone away. Uh, the rest come from uh, you know all over the city and, and all of them use the various forms of uh, transportation, be it buses or trains or uh, all of this. Now, a combination of so many people you know, from, from all over is going to be a herculean task for us to manage. And I think which is why uh, this, this uh, one uh, reality of COVID is going to keep us and bring a lot of discipline into the way we work. Towards our banking, uh, you know, there is a lot of dependency today towards last minute shoots and reshoots and updating the episodes and uh, a lot of madness that, that we nudge in uh, at, at a uh, daily level. It's something that we want to continue. Uh, as far as TV, neither we are losing you out. No, no, it's, it's, it's again, it's, it's getting very bad. Uh, lo- losing out on you. Uh, I'll again jump to, uh, so let, let me jump to uh, Suresh quickly. Uh, Suresh, there's a question from again Srinivasan says that, uh, and that was also on my uh, uh, agenda to ask, you know, from a print industry point of view. 
you know print industry worldwide went down dramatically you know over the last few years india was one country which was defeating the trend and we saw we were saying that uh, even our pwc out of report we said that print will grow over next uh, few years you know still in india do you think that uh, this event uh, this crisis will uh, speed up the death of physical newspapers in india much sooner um it will be a challenge for physical newspapers in india but the point is how do you describe yourself as a as a company if you are describing yourself as a newspaper company you are in big trouble uh, in the coming few years but if you describe yourself as a content company then i think you are uh, you are in a reasonably good space because at the end of the day uh, raman and this is a fact right a uh, few days ago you must have uh, a very uh, leading news television channel uh, there uh, um, it had a very high profile anchor who left and started his own channel recently but uh, this particular channel came back and reported that italy had found a vaccine breaking news right for the next 3 hours the kind of hits that the hindu site got on asking is it true you know they wanted verification from a newspaper because at the end of the day credibility authenticity and trust still are the hallmarks of a newspaper and i think post this covid one thing that's going to happen is the consumer and i think uma touched upon this when she spoke about her 7 million uh, first citizens is that consumers are going to gravitate towards trust towards credibility and authenticity they need to trust that's going to be highest on their agenda so i think if you are a uh, if you are a content uh, company that manufactures uh, information or or that puts out information that is full uh, that can be trusted i think you have uh, a good runway ahead of you and then that medium can be physical newspaper for some time yes and will be digital for some time so uh, it all depends on how you have invested and grown but i think if you describe yourself as a content company and that too from a newspaper house that is very different because then you are talking about cred- owning credibility authenticity and trust which is going to be i think the hallmark and as far as marketers yeah. are concerned well, marketers are it's the same thing right what uh, uma was saying or what prachi was saying is that you're not going to have too much money to experiment uh, even when things open up etc budgets are going to be cut you're not going to have too much money to experiment you will go with tried and tested mediums that have delivered for you that deliver roi for you where you have had good experiences and you have had you know you will go with them so that's where i think again a good so content I, company or a good I, company i hear you out one of the very very quick quick uh, rapid fire kind of thing you know marketing across uh, Uh, Krishna, uh, you know we didn't get time to get back to you. Uh, Parley, speaking of Parley again, you know it's a it's a brand. You know in the space you are into FMCG. Uh, you know it's always a heavy uh, advertising, uh, different kind of uh, uh, promotions that you got to run in store promotions. You know uh, and and a lot of uh, uh, outdoor advertising that happens. How do you see that shift? Uh, how do you how do you see the preparedness of the organization? to to traverse this digital maturity which is happen now you know dramatically how, how do you see parley uh, responding to uh, the shift in consumer behavior yeah so frankly speaking so uh, uh, we've always uh, we were one of the foremost companies to have been very very experimented i am saying and we, 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 we quick uh, we two minutes each ah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, so, yeah. so 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 for example uh, when when discovery uh, came uh, to india uh, so we were the first advertisers actually in the country to onboard uh, so having said that so digital we have been experimenting and having it for quite some time and uh, uh, so 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 we continue to do that uh, but now the shift is uh, say for example largely we are not so much on to out of home or uh, yeah btl or so, so in store promotions is something very very critical uh, critical for us so that we continue to do uh, as of now there is a constraint as such at at most of the modern retail uh, stores but having said that as far as television is concerned print we have been always lying low but uh, television so from from a perspective where we are largely gc focused now we are actually looking at being focused on news channels so that's i think that's the kind of a shift so that that's the shift that is but do you also see a quick shift uh, a dramatic shift on your digital spend yes definitely yes. so that's already been on actually for a while so be it uh, uh, so, uh, youtube or google or or for that matter a lot of ott we have been doing uh, we have been partnering with a lot of ott players for quite some time so that continues to remain and possibly as we move on we are looking at actually taking many more onto our fold and and continue so there is definitely going to be a spike as far as digital is concerned 
good. Neeraj, uh, I want to come back to you once, no. once more. Uh, uh, maybe you know uh, a quick uh, future outlook from a from a you know uh, from your industry point of view, cinema, film. How do you see it? Uh, because the OTT is on the rise now. It will keep on rising more and more with the consumer behavior, you know, which is there. Uh, people will refrain from going to, uh, uh, you know, cinema halls. Do you see more movies being made for more and more now in future for direct uh, to home releases, OTT release, will or will the window of theatrical release be cut down, you know, from, you know, where it is now to maybe a week or, or maybe even less than that sometimes. So what kind of shift do you see happening in that space? So clearly, from a from a TV standpoint, I don't see a problem because OTT con uh, OTT content being made is for the discerning audience, and uh, that is meant to be viewed in privacy on a device of their choice at that time. Uh, which is why it's it's content which is very it's it's got absolutely nothing to do with the TV kind of audience, you know. So so that as far as that is concerned, I don't see any threat. From a movie's point of view, yes, I see a huge shift. Uh, I think at least five to six large releases uh, will shift. You will see that uh, in in uh, from June onwards, or even May, mid or May end onwards, uh, to uh, OTT platforms, they will completely skip the theatrical cycle. And uh, this is a reality. I think at least for the next six to eight months, uh, I think the first big release uh, from uh, a theatrical standpoint will only probably happen towards Diwali. Uh, the screen owners are, are, are in a mess of their own. Uh, you know, it's it's going to be uh, very heavily guarded in terms of how many people getting in, and keep the, the screen owners are talking about, uh, you know, probably just thirty percent kind of people being let into the movie halls and stuff like that. So I think that business is gone for it. Also, if you're a small movie, if you're budgeted between say twenty to thirty crores, uh, then digital and then satellite is possibly the best to recover your investments. If you've made something in excess of 100 or 150 crores, then you have no choice but to wait for the theatrical cycle to happen because uh, nobody can make up for that kind of movie. So this is where we are. Do, 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 do you see from a from a, uh, a content production point of view, you know, because uh, you know a constant supply is so important in this business. You know, for yes. TV industry yes. to succeed, you know, they have to have new shows, you know, coming yes, up yes. every day. Yeah, yeah, clearly, I think that, that that definitely is a big issue. And uh, unfortunately, like I said, you know, we'll have to restart a lot of a lot of our uh, uh, look at a lot of our existing patterns. Uh, you know, we may need to look at maybe moving away from the daily uh, show kind of a format to maybe uh, three days a week, dividing the week between you know to a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and a Thursday. Uh, Friday, Saturday, kind of a reality. So all of those combinations are being looked at uh, because uh, you know it's very possible that we will not be able to physically get that kind of time to shoot and deliver daily episodes, uh, you know, on a continuous basis. Uh, given all the hygiene that's going to come in, you know, from all angles. Uh, even if we get into situations of you know multi-cam shoot or, or, or two units or three units, uh, it's it's all going to get tight. But uh, I, I, I see this rolling out, I think, definitely by, uh, you know, a month, a month and a half's time. And, uh, you know, if, if we are able to plan our, our writing and our edit and our post facilities uh, a little better, uh, you know, if we, if we work on the story lines, which is what I think everybody is doing, and if we get a little more organized, uh, then I think this is this is going to hold uh, you know the industry in good state. I think uh, we were far too indulgent in a lot of things that we were doing. Uh, the whole pressure of uh, you know uh, putting up uh, six seven shows every day uh, is, is something which in any case was not very smart and viable. So I think uh, a lot of new solutions are going to emerge in this in this new reality. Uh, definitely, I think uh, our, our, our discipline is, is something that is uh, to the fore. Uh, from an industry standpoint, uh, you know, we will, we will have to work in, in, in a fast, smart way and in fast, safer ways, uh, which, is a, which is a concern right now. Hygiene levels across studios and all, all, all facilities are not on the list. So I think a lot of leadership yep. will happen here. I, I hear you out. I, I think uh, that, that's a very relevant point. I personally do believe that I think uh, uh, technology will start playing, uh, you know, the whole uh, 
the whole talk of digital studios interconnected digital studios vis a vis physical studios will you know uh, come into existence much faster now i'll uh, but but good to uh, have that you know perspective uh, aniraj suresh a very quick question uh, a quick answer on that please uh, you know you said uh, digital is on the rise physical has gone down that trend will continue uh, while the subscription revenue has gone but advertising revenue has not come so much on digital do you see the phenomenon to be like this which means then you are in you know then then the news industry is in some kind of trouble you know whether you are a only physical paper or or a digital content company news content as a whole or do you see the advertising dollars coming back to digital news segment as much as you would have been earning on physical side of it and therefore growing as a business that's a that's that's a that's a very very pertinent question on news industry right now how would you see hindu shaping it up suresh okay i can tell you overall what's happening in the business Uh, as far as the shift is concerned one big shift that is happening in our business is that from the advertiser bearing the brunt for all the costs of running my business and my profit etc it's slowly shifting to the consumer the reader actually paying for content on both platforms what do i mean by that on digital it's not going to be advertising it's going to be subscription that's going to lead the way advertising is going to be limited on di- digital thanks to the uh, hegemony of google and facebook and you got to live on the dole that they give you on the programmatic uh, on the pro- on the programmatic piece but the, even that is being questioned i don't know if you're uh, i'm sure you're aware in france uh, there's been a ruling now that google and facebook has to pay for content right when they want it on their platform so if that happens in india wow i mean companies like me are are going to gain big time yeah if it happens in india point number 2 consumers are paying for uh, are the subscription revenue on digital is going to be the driver like the subscription revenue on physical newspapers as well uh, the city that you live in raman uh, delhi gurgaon uh, hindu is 10 rupees on a weekday and 15 rupees on a weekend it's the most expensive english newspaper in the country right i think that's the way the rest of the newspapers are going to follow because you're going to get consumers to pay for uh, uh, for content and so uh, the balance is going to become content. equal so rather than Uh, all the all the load coming on to the advertiser i think it's going to be more evenly s- split with consumers actually paying for content both from in a digital platform and in a physical cover price so i think that is going to balance so out that's going to be want- new normal for newspapers and uh, digital newspapers so so you don't want prachi and uma and krishna to spend too much money on because the subscription revenue will make up a lot of that right now they are friends now they are friends <laughs> okay yeah so uh, prashi uh, and in fact all of you for that reason you know uh, you know one one big uh, shift we will wrap up in next three four minutes so i'll 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 pace up you know the closure discussion accordingly uh, you know because of the whole entire discussion that we did the shift that has happened that that has happened it has become even more critical for all the businesses across value chain to get to know your consumer for example uh, suresh you know in the newspaper industry however because small you might be uh, you don't even know who the readers are in in the physical newspaper business you know your, in, your information ends is the best at the hawker level true, true, true. and likewise pretty true, much true. in every industry you know so i think the the first party data as we call it you know the consumer direct data is becoming so so critical and and everybody is investing to you know garner more information and more you know strength around that on that piece because that is going to lay the foundation of your marketing strategies as you go forward that will be the foundation of your your knowledge of first party data will determine what your marketing channels are going to be how your roi is going to be and how deeply you can engage with the consumers so on that front i want to ask each of you in a rapid fire one innovation that either you see you know you you yourself doing into your company or you see the industry doing let's say in large i know a, a quick piece of innovation on on, uh, on that side of it which is investing in investing in uh, consumer uh, information database and building marketing strategies around it so i want to start with uh, uh, maybe start with uh, uma so um i think there will have to definitely be a like we've all been talking in the past also about a seamless experience whether in terms of whether you know how you sell or how you serve or how you uh, market right in terms of channels etc 
but i think that mm-hmm. uh, there will have to be some kind of a innovation you know because contactless is going to be a very big trend or uh, let's say work from home is going to be a very big trend i think that for retailers there might be a little, little bit of a redefinition of this whole weekday and weekend divide and how do we use uh, technology and automation to really leverage that and capitalize on that where when people don't want to actually come to the store but still want that whole experience because shopping is still an indulgent experience uh, in our case right it's not just about a click look see and you buy i mean that works too but we really want to re- if you want to recreate that indulgent experience how do you bring that to home or how do you make that seamless i think that's definitely one area of innovation that fashion retailers will need to make so experiential immersive experience yeah. that is what you know you would want to do very 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 valid point uh, prachi so, um, one one piece of innovation that you see coming up so i i believe that a consumer uh, has to be interacted on different mediums on different levels so for example i have varied interest on varied platforms and i want to be spoken by a certain brand on a certain platform only i don't want to get touched on other platforms so maybe uh, that innovation is yet to come into fore from um, us as brands and uh, that's something that we are going to focus on so interacting uh, with a certain customer on the right platform and not touching him or her on the other where he does not want to be touched upon and giving the right kind of content as well very very valid you know which which again will come by really uh, getting to know your consumer on all the platform as a first party you know so again it will go back to that so uh, krishna how would you uh, pick one piece of innovation on your side of the yeah i think uh, uh, this has already uh, happened i think it's it's uh, uh, before time we will 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 sort of re- realize that this is really a very big innovation i think the likes of uh, uh, we we all know the model which uh, uh, on which uh, gro- uh, players like grofers and big basket and flipkart and amazon they operate so for as far as groceries concerned so guys like swiggy and zomato actually zomato has launched a zomato market wherein uh, they have come up with a separate market so unlike a grofers which actually has a warehouse and delivers uh, zomato market is actually picking up from almost on the lines of uh, restaurants so they are picking up stuff from uh, from my distributors parlese for example and delivering it to the consumer i think that's something uh, that's going to be a very very uh, big uh, breakthrough in that uh, segment as far as uh, technology is also concerned very good I and mean, that's, that's a great example because i do know we work with some of our clients and i do know that uh, there are big 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 uh, drastic disruptions yes. that are going to happen in the whole supply chain side of uh, you know this industry so very very valid point uh, i'm sorry but Ashwari, another example another example is donzo donzo is also doing the same thing actually i'm sorry yeah yeah correct very very valid true i agree yeah. with you suresh one quick piece of uh, uh, innovation you see coming up something exciting the limitation for physical newspapers has all has always been interactivity right it's always been one way communication what uh, the digital handle has done for us is it's increased uh, interactivity hugely today out of my total base 27% of my customers i know by their email id or uh, or their uh, phone number or both right so which is like a significant move about a year and a half ago i knew about 5% of my consumers today i know 27% of my readers uh, which i think and that number is growing uh, as we speak we just launched a campaign saying keep the habit yesterday where we are saying there are some wonderful habits in the covid time that you must keep like calling up your maid and asking her is she okay etc etc it's a very nice it's a nice emotional campaign developed by onm for us and uh, the kind of in one day the kind of responses we have got from our readers on the digital platform it was a, it, it has been released both on physical and digital but it's increased interactivity so it's helped us talk to the consumers and everything that we are doing now is being led by what the consumer is telling us just to give uh, the uh, prachi and uma some some quick hope so we did a what uh, so uh, they want to do after the lockdown after the lockdown we did a massive survey over the last survey over the last number 2 on their list was shopping number 1 was dining out number 2 was shopping and in shopping first was uh, electronic second was apparel suresh i received that report yeah. <laughs> so i'm sure that was so i'll i'll uh, thank thanks suresh for uh, i agree with you on the interactivity piece of it and by the way i have been reading hindustan times for 40 years and i can bet hindustan times doesn't know that there is somebody called as raman kalra who has been reading for 40 years 
so they never came to me that you have stopped reading paper you know come on our digital platform never happened so that's a big problem in the newspaper industry you know to speak of uh neeraj i one piece of innovation that you see in this uh, in the film supply chain kind of business no i think uh, you might think uh, hello yeah am i audible go ahead Uh, clearly, I think from a you know team standpoint, uh, we have created content uh, only with the work, uh, you know, reading reality in mind for far too long, and you know that was fine up to the time we were a B two B kind of a business. Uh, you know, with, with NTO and the new tariffs order, uh, we are now a B two C business, and I think uh, you know it's it's, it's time we we very genuinely. Uh, more audiences segment them, you know, as per their PTs and demographics and you know markets and so many things. All of those that we haven't done at a very deep level. Uh, I think it's 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 something that we've already initiated, and I think uh, you know uh, it's 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 going to be imperative because if we want to compete, if the television wants to compete in the new pay reality. Uh, you know, it's 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 not just a cable operator anymore. It's what is it? We will be going to be a family uh, every month. Uh, then, then we really, really have to get an act together. So, rating reality is one thing uh, for the forty thousand meters uh, of the paying consumer. It will mean we need to understand at a very deep level uh, the kind of uh, content that he or she is looking for. Yeah, I, I would, uh, I couldn't agree, you know, uh, more on that. Uh, you totally spot on, uh, Neeraj. I wish you know we had a better audio quality though from you, but that's that's you know very really unfortunate. You know, technology does. Like technology does all kind of things sometimes. So, so I think we we are running out of time. We actually ran uh, out of time, and uh, you know to some extent uh, limit on me because I had my tech glitches to start the uh, call in the beginning. On that note, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Neeraj. Thank you, Prachi. Thank you, Uma. Thank you, Suresh and Krishna. It was wonderful uh, interacting with all of you. And uh, I, I continue to believe that uh, you know, uh, you know, Indians have been the most you know uh, adoptive uh, you know species in the world. And we we adopt to a situation much faster than anybody else. You know, so once, once you come back to to a near normalcy or the new normal in the new normal ways of doing digital business, I think we'll still see demand picking up for you know all the kind of fun we're talking about. But but there will be a dramatic. Amount of digital acceleration that would need to happen across all businesses. A lot more innovation. So on that uh, uh, good note, uh, we would end the session here. Thank you so much, uh, Thank you. Uh, all the audience. Thank you. Thank you. We had a hundred plus people joining in. We, we we took some questions. We couldn't take uh, uh, all, but uh, thank you for being there. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Kalra, for chairing this for session, sharing and this session. to all our uh, eminent speakers thank you very much for spending this time here with us on this session you had some great questions also coming in it was very very informative and such uh, amazing innovations that we've heard about uh, i think everybody is going to take note of that so thank you very much uh, i think i will just thank all our audiences as well but uh, firstly thank you to our speakers and mr kalra for chairing the session thank you very much thank you Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, to all those who are watching us, uh, this is where we end our uh, E four M E Conclave twenty twenty. We've heard some great thoughts and information on what the post COVID media impact and entertainment uh, industry is going to face. We've also heard how much uh, difference with the experiential industry face when it's about zero touch world or the world of virtual events. So there is so much that is spoken about in this particular live. You can rewatch it on our Facebook, YouTube, and other platforms as well. Till then, I am Kyati Kawa, your e-host for this e-conclave, signing off. Thank you very much, and have a good day. <laughs>